Russian nuclear submarine Dmitry Donskoy sails under the Great Belt Bridge in Denmark on its way to St. Petersburg, July 21, 2017. Scan picks Denmark, Sarah Christine Norgard via Reuters The U.S. and NATO have noted increasing Russian naval activity around Europe in recent years. That activity, particularly the submarine component, has sparked concern about the vulnerability of undersea cables connecting the global economy. NATO and the U.S. have responded, bolstering forces at sea and anti-submarine warfare efforts and shifting NATO commands. Russian undersea naval activity in the North Atlantic has reached new levels, and NATO is worried that the undersea cables connecting North America and Europe and the rest of the world are being targeted. We are now seeing Russian underwater activity in the vicinity of undersea cables that I don't believe we have ever seen, U.S. Navy Rear Admiral Andrew Lennon, commander of NATO's submarine forces, told the Washington Post. Russia is clearly taking an interest in NATO and NATO nations undersea infrastructure. Moscow subs appear to be interested in the privately owned lines that stretch across the seabed, carrying insulated fiber optic cables. The cables are strewn across the world's oceans and seas, carrying 95% of communications and over $10 trillion in daily transactions. Blocking the flow of information through them could scramble the internet, while tapping into them could give eavesdroppers a valuable picture of the data flowing within. The cables are fragile and have been damaged in the past by ship's anchors, though usually in areas where repairs are relatively easy. Air Chief Marshal Stuart Peach, the UK's defence chief, has also had alarm about Russia's apparent focus on the undersea cables. There is a new risk to our way of life, which is the vulnerability of the cables that crisscross the seabeds, he said earlier this month. AP, Frank Preval Lenin's and Peach's warnings are only the latest about Russian undersea activity in the vicinity of important underwater infrastructure. The New York Times reported in late 2015 that increased Russian naval activity near the lines led U.S. military officials to fear Moscow planned to attack the cables in the event of conflict. U.S. officials said they had seen elevated Russian operations along the cables routes in the North Sea and Northeast Asia and even along U.S. shores. Many undersea cables are in familiar places, but others, commissioned by the U.S. for military purposes, are in secret locations. U.S. officials said in 2015 that increased Russia undersea activity could have been efforts to locate those cables. There was no sign at that time that any cables had been cut, and Lenin declined to tell the Post if the defense bloc believed Russia has touched any of the undersea lines. But elevated Russian undersea activity comes as NATO members and other countries in Europe grow more concerned about what they see as assertive Russian activity on the ground, in the air, and at sea around the continent. Russian planes have had numerous near misses with their NATO counterparts over the Baltics in recent months, and Russia's massive Zapod 2017 military exercises in Russia and Belarus during September had NATO on edge. A force multiplier the crew of the Varshavyanka class diesel submarine during the Victory Day Parade in Vladivostok, Russia, May 9, 2015. Reuters, host photo agency, RIA Novosti Moscow has also pursued naval expansion, with a focus on undersea capabilities. A modernization program announced in 2011 directed more money toward submarines, producing quieter, more lethal designs. Moscow has brought or overhauled 13 subs since 2014, according to the Post. Among them was the Krasnodar, which Russian officials boasted could avoid the West's most sophisticated radars. U.S. and NATO ships tracked the Krasnodar intently this summer, as it traveled from Russia to the Black Sea, stopping along the way to fire missiles in this area. More advanced subs are reportedly in production. Russian attack submarine Krasnodar, seen in the North Sea in early May 2017. ADM Rob Kramer, Twitter subs are seen by Moscow as a force multiplier, as rivals would need to dedicate considerable resources to tracking just one submarine. Subs are also able to operate without being seen, to carry out retaliatory strikes, and to threaten resupply routes, allowing them to have an outsize impact. Russia now fields 65 subs, while the U.S. has 66, according to the Post. Adding to Russia's subsurface fleet are deep-sea research vessels, including a converted ballistic missile sub that can launch smaller submarines. We know that these auxiliary submarines are designed to work on the ocean floor, and they're transported by the mothership, and we believe they may be equipped to manipulate objects on the ocean floor, Lenin told the Post. Russian officials have also touted their fleet's increased operations. In March 2017, ADM. Vladimir Korolyov, commander of the Russian Navy, said the Russian Navy in 2016 reached the same level as before the post-Soviet period, in terms of running hours. 
This is more than 3,000 days at sea for the Russian submarine fleet, Korolyov added. This is an excellent sign. Those ships are vulnerable to undersea threats. A Dutch helicopter participates in NATO's dynamic Mongoose anti-submarine exercise in the North Sea off the coast of Norway, May 4, 2015. Reuters, Marit Hometal, and TV Scanpix Western countries have also pursued their own buildup in response. While U.S. plans call for curtailing production of Virginia-class attack subs when Columbia-class missile subs began production in the early 2020s, a recent study found that the Navy and industry can produce two Virginia-class subs and one Columbia-class sub a year, averting what Navy officials have described as an expected submarine shortfall in the mid-2020s and keeping the fleet ahead of near-peer rivals like Russia and China. The U.S. is looking to sensors, sonar, weapons control, quieting technologies, undersea drones, and communication systems to help its subs maintain their edge. Government auditors have said the Columbia-class subs will need more testing and development to avoid delays and cost overruns down the line. However, elsewhere in NATO, Norway and Germany, the latter of which does not currently have any operational subs, recently agreed on a deal to build two submarines for each country. The response extends to tactics as well. U.S. and NATO personnel have dedicated more time to anti-submarine warfare training and operations. Transponder data shows that the U.S. Navy has in recent months flown numerous sorties over areas where Russian subs operate, according to the Post. It is an indication of the changing dynamic in the world that a skill set, maybe we didn't spend a lot of time on in the last 15 years, is coming back, capped. Jim McCall, commander of the air wing on aircraft carrier USS George H.W. Bush, told the Wall Street Journal this fall. U.S. Navy personnel aboard USS Vicksburg participating in NATO's dynamic mongoose anti-submarine exercise in the North Sea off the coast of Norway, May 4, 2015. Reuters, Marit Hometal, and TV scan picks as the number of sub-hunting ships that can patrol the North Atlantic, Baltic, and Mediterranean has fallen since the Cold War. NATO members are working to deploy more air and sea assets. This summer, France, Germany, Greece, Italy, Spain, and Turkey signed a letter of intent to start development of new submarine-detecting aircraft. The number of frigates, typically used for anti-submarine warfare, in use by NATO allies has fallen from about 100 in the early 1990s to about 50 today, prompting the U.S. to rush to field more in the coming years. Attention has also returned to the North Atlantic choke point between Greenland, Iceland, and the U.K. GIUK gap was a crucial element of Cold War naval defenses, and U.S. anti-submarine planes were based in Iceland for decades before leaving in 2006. The U.S. Navy has been upgrading hangars in Iceland to accommodate new P-8A Poseidon aircraft, however, and the Pentagon has said the U.S. and Iceland have agreed to increase rotations of the U.S. surveillance planes there next year. U.S. Navy crew members on a P-8A Poseidon assist search and rescue operations for Malaysia Airlines Flight MH370 in the Indian Ocean, March 16, 2014. U.S. Navy as the Russian Navy seeks to reverse the contraction it experienced after the Cold War, NATO too is looking to expand its commands after shrinking in the years since the fall of the Soviet Union. A recent NATO internal report found that the alliance's rapid responsibilities had atrophied since the end of the Cold War and recommended setting up two new commands to line supply efforts. One, based on the continent, would oversee the movement of personnel and material in Europe, and the other, potentially based in the U.S., would oversee transatlantic resupply efforts and the defense of sea lanes. If you want to transport a lot of stuff, you have to do that by ship, Lenin, NATO's submarine commander, told the journal this fall. And those ships are vulnerable to undersea threats. Plans for the new commands were approved in early November. More details are expected in February, though current plans include embedding the NATO North Atlantic Command with U.S. Fleet Forces Command in Norfolk, Virginia. We are a transatlantic alliance, and we must therefore be in a position to transport troops and equipment over the Atlantic, NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg said recently. For that, we need secure and open seaways.